At 15 years of age, Omar Qadar was the youngest detainee at Guantanamo Bay when he was arrested seven years ago. In July, he will face a military tribunal on charges of throwing a grenade that killed a U.S. soldier. Is it fair? Well, joining me now from Shreveport, Louisiana, is Carter's defense attorney, Barry Coburn. Barry, thanks so much for joining me. So first of all, I want to ask you, what was your client charged with and what is he guilty of? Well, I can tell you what he's charged with. He's charged, as you just said, with throwing a grenade, which uh, amounts in the eyes of the Department of Defense to a charge of murder. He's also charged with material support to the enemy. And that relates to a contention that he was involved in um, helping to assemble and distribute improvised explosive devices. That's and is he guilty enough. of any of that? Our position is that he's not guilty of any of it. I think all those charges are highly defensible, and if we're put to the test, then we very much look forward to defending him in court. So Cotter is the youngest detainee at Guantanamo Bay, and many have said that he was indoctrinated and therefore should be offered rehabilitation instead of prosecution. Is that what you guys want, too? Well, we certainly don't think he should be prosecuted. In terms of whether he needs rehabilitation, um, I guess, you know, the sense of it from our point of view is the reason Omar Khadr was in Afghanistan at all was because he was there with his dad. As you pointed out, he was 15 years old at the time. I really don't have any reason to believe that he is a subscriber to any of uh, these uh, uh, sorts of extremist views at this point. So I don't know that rehabilitation is necessary, but certainly it would be a far preferable alternative to prosecution in a military tribunal. And, you know, what has it been like, obviously, you've spoken to him, for Qatar to be held at Guantanamo Bay? Even the toughest have complained of the conditions there. But what about, you know, he was 15 years old when he got sent there. How was that like? What was that like for him? Well, his father was killed. Um, at the same time, uh, Omar was severely wounded, uh, lost the sight in one eye, um, and uh, still suffers other severe uh, physical difficulties as a result of the fact that he was shot multiple times. He was shipped uh, to uh, uh, first to an air base um, in Asia and then to Guantanamo Bay. He's had no direct physical contact with his family for approximately eight years. So it's horrendous. The situation is horrendous. But that being said, I think Omar is, in many ways, a very strong uh, young man, particularly given his age and the things he's been through. We admire him, and uh, we think he's holding up as well as he possibly could under these extraordinary circumstances. And, you know, Omar's case is supposed to be the first full military commission trial under President Obama, yet prosecution of people under the age of 18 rarely happens. I mean, why do you think the U.S. is moving forward, uh, full forward with this case, despite U.N. urging not to prosecute children for war crimes? Well, excellent question, really. I don't think we have a good answer to that. From our point of view, as you point out, he was 15 when the events in question occurred. You know, it would be highly unlikely that he would be prosecuted as a 15-year-old alleged offender in the U.S. federal courts, and we think that may very well be part of the reason why the U.S. government declined to prosecute him in a regular civilian court and instead is proceeding with these military tribunals, which we think are defective in all kinds of different regards. And, you know, I think another... So I don't, I don't know, sorry, continue. I'm sorry, guys. I just don't know what their motive is, really. I mean, um, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to speculate. I think it's a highly wrongful and really indefensible decision. And I think another important thing to point out is President Obama's stance on all of this. You know, he's repeatedly spoken out against torture and has said on many occasions that he wants to close Guantanamo Bay. I mean, why do you think President Obama is continuing what many say are Bush-era policies? Excellent question. I really don't know how directly involved President Obama is in this piece of decision making here. But in terms of, you know, the notion of proceeding against these individuals using military tribunals, which frankly, where the rules are not even written. I mean, the statute is constantly changing. And, you know, what we think of as ordinary due process is not accorded any of these individuals. I really cannot account for that decision. I think it's very much unlike what I certainly thought the Obama administration was going to be all about. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And We'll certainly keep our viewers updated on that.